Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market. I'm going to do my Apple analysis today a little bit differently. I'm going to show you how I use Motive Wave and I'm going to show you how I also at the same time come up with a wave count. So this is my wave count for Apple. I've been having some trouble with Apple and it's been having trouble with me for the last week or a few days or so. I was expecting that we're in a flat correction and I was expecting that the C wave was extremely likely to make a new high beyond the end of the A wave to avoid a very very rare running flat. So I was not expecting a truncation but that's what we've got. A channel about this piece of movement has really clearly breached. We've obviously finished this upwards wave and we're in a downwards wave. So I want to see if this piece of movement here fits as a 3 or a 5 so at first glance there is this possibility, at least on the daily chart. So I want to see if this works. And I want to see if maybe we have a rear running flat which might indicate some pretty strong downwards movement ahead. So I'm going to have a look at the hourly chart, at this just this piece of movement here and see how that works. For each different time frame I do a different analysis because of these different elements that I have on my charts. I don't want to have to hide them for various time frames, it's just a hassle and it's so much easier to work with like this. So this is what I had for the hourly chart for my last analysis. Although price is still above this invalidation point, this just is not right. So I don't think it's going to move above there and I don't think we're going to reach that target. I think we may have the C wave complete, so I'm going to have to delete this analysis. <coughs> You have to delete everything in here too. So I'm going to double click on this and drag it down to here, just looking at this by eye. That looks about right. Let's see if we put these here. Let's see if there are Fibonacci ratios at minute degree here. I don't like the Fibonacci tools in Motive Wave. They have, I'll show you why. They have a whole bunch of different, so I, I would not look at two versus one. I would look at three versus one. I'm not looking at the corrections. I'm looking at five versus, five versus one plus three. No, I'd look at 5 versus 1 or 5 versus 3. No. And I'm so used to just looking at the numbers and getting a pretty good idea whether or not we have Fibonacci ratios there after doing this for years. I don't really want to use those ratio tools. Up to you if you do. So at first glance, we see this first wave is $30.15 in length. Let's see if the third wave is about 1.618 that length, so yep, I'm doing it old school with a calculator. So that's $48.78. How far off is that to $52.75? That's $3.97 off. What percentage is $3.97 of $52.75? Okay, that's 7.5%. That's acceptable. That's less than 10%. That's a little bit arbitrary, I know, but if there's a less than 10% variation, I figure that's acceptable. And it's pretty obvious, just by looking at this, that 1 and 5 are really close to equality. 5 is $31.36, and 1 is $30.15. That's only a $1.21 difference, and that's going to be well less than 10%. So that's actually pretty typical Fibonacci ratios for that impulse. So that looks right. What happens if we put the trend channel here using Elliot's first technique from 1, I'm grabbing these green buttons on this trend channel, to 3, and for the other one I want it to stay parallel there and move it, and put the other one on 2. That looks really good. Okay, well I wish I'd seen that a week ago. That looks really good. Let's see how this decomposes. So I'm going to right click and decompose this as an impulse and Y 
Okay, motive wave has started from the beginning. Let's start it down there. Okay, I think the first wave's probably there. Second wave probably there. That looks right. Third wave at the end. So I'm looking at a third wave extension. When I try and decompose an impulse, I'll always expect to see the third wave is most likely to be extended. That's so common. Now I can see this also fits perfectly as an impulse. Okay, and this structure here looks like a leading diagonal. And I disagree with where it's put the end of 2 and 4. 2 has to be here. And 4 should be on this red candle right there. I'm going to right click here and from this analysis option show the channel. And I'm going to make the lines on the channel as unobtrusive as possible, half a point in width, and I'm going to make it the same colour. Uh, I'm going to make it the same colour as the labels I'm attaching it to. That looks pretty good. Let's have a look at ratios at minuet degree here. I'm just going to widen this so I can see these numbers better using this button down here. Drag this over to the right a little bit. You highlight these minuet waves so I can see the lengths. Okay, the first wave is 2144. 1.618. That length is $34.69. How far is that off? $31.05, the length of the third wave. $3.64. What percentage is that? No, 12%. That's no. Okay, 2144 and 1318. 1318 looks like it might be 0.618 of 2144. Oh yeah, that's pretty close. So 0.618, the length of the first wave is $13.25 and we've got $13.18. That's only 7 cents off. That's really close. That'll be well less than 10%. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that labelling. What about this fifth wave? Let's see, it's not a diagonal. The only two options are an impulse or a diagonal. So how are we going to have an impulse there? I disagree with that. That first wave, if I leave that there, that's a three-wave structure. That doesn't work. It's probably here. And the third wave is probably the one that's going to be extended. So let's put that right up the end. And now let's... Count how many subdivisions we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, that's impulsive. Which one of the subwaves is extended though? It doesn't look like the third. I disagree with that completely. That leaves the third wave and the fifth wave as three wave structures. And could it be the third wave extended? No, that doesn't look right. The third wave in it would be the shortest. That would not work. What about the fifth wave extended? Does that work? Yeah, that works. So we've got an extension here. Let's bring that green label back. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's squish this back up and have a look at the whole thing. Wow, that's actually looking pretty good. That fits in that channel perfectly. Okay. So, I'm going to move the invalidation point. Well, just highlight this line. Just going to bring this over here. I'm not quite sure where we're going to have this yet because I haven't analysed this new downwards movement. I'll leave that label up there for now. Okay, so this is probably the start of intermediate wave 3. It's, it's got to be an impulse. Why is it telling me that? Okay, yeah. Okay. And I completely disagree. There's no way minor waves 1 and 3 are complete, and that looks wrong anyway. Let's drag this over to the left so that when I have these labels, I'm going to get them out of the way on the right there. And again, I disagree. I don't think we have minute wave 1 complete at all. 
it's far too brief for a minute degree wave. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, we're getting a bit closer, I think. Well, the first wave is not a three wave structure, so it's probably over there. It's pretty common, first waves can be really brief. That looks like a three, that's an incomplete structure, that's not a complete impulse. Let's subdivide that. Okay, now we're starting to look right. Let's pull this up here. Let's see if there's a ratio between 1 and 3. Oh no, yeah, 2.618. The length of 1 is $38.98 and we're just 2 cents off. Wow, okay. Let's... This has got an overlap here. We've probably got a leading diagonal here. Yeah, that fits. Let's put some trend lines in there. So we know that's the leading diagonal. Where are we there? Show the channel. I'm going to make those lines the same colour as the labels and I'm going to make them really small. Let's decompose this. It's a correction. I'm not going to worry too much about how that subdivides because it's totally over, that's for sure. I need to spend time on the other one, not that one. Let's have a look at this. No, totally disagree with that. Again, oh, look, fifth wave, a three wave structure. That doesn't work. Let's pull that down. It's probably an extended third wave. They usually are. Let's have a look and see if those ratios exist here. $6.26 for the first wave times, or oh, let's see, 4.236 perhaps, 26.51, no, no ratio there. What about 1.618? Is $10.12, we've got $11.10, probably too far off. It's 97 cents off. Oh yeah, that's acceptable, 8.7% variation. So the fifth wave <coughs> is 97 cents longer than 1.618 the length of the first. Well, that's acceptable. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. So I think we probably don't have the end of minute degree 3 over yet. Let's put a channel around that from the general menu here. And we'll use an extended channel. Let's draw it using Elliot's first technique. See what that looks like from 1 to 3, a copy on 2. No, that's not going to work. Next technique, 2 to 4, and a copy on 3. Hmm. Let's just pull that up to the left so it's containing this a little bit better. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, let's make that as narrow as possible. Make it orange. Okay. That's starting to look pretty good. So apart from the C wave at minor degree being a bit truncated, it's all looking pretty good so far. Let's put this in the midline. Let's show the midline. Maybe that's where the fifth wave is going to end. Hmm. So we've already got a really nice ratio, just two cents off between one and three. We might not see a ratio for the fifth. If that fifth wave, because the fourth wave is 1895 deep, if the fifth wave equaled one, it would be truncated. Probably not going to happen. Let's see if it reached 0.618, the length of the third. It's $24.10. It'll be 413.75. Where's that? I want that label there too. Let's snap that back there. Okay. That looks, if it finished there, that would look pretty typical. Let's put a, from the commentary menu, put an arrow in here. Snap it to the end, 
I'll make it blue. I'll make it wider. And I'm going to bring a note over here for the target. Widen that out and put it over here where the target is. Okay. Mm, so if we're in that fourth wave, let's just drag this over to the right so we don't have wasted space there. I'm going to squish this up so I can see all of that C wave. Not that much. Expand it out a bit. That's pretty good. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to put this invalidation line to show where that's going to be invalidated. Down here. Four can't move into one, so that price point low is 450.48. And I'll drag that down here. Okay, there's my hourly chart. Happy with that, there are some very nice ratios. And this is now actually more typical, and I wish I'd seen that last week. Well, I was biased to not wanting to see it because I was biased towards the more common scenario of not seeing it rear running flat in a truncation. That's the problem with rear structures. You can never expect that that's what's going to happen because, well, probability says it won't. I'll just save that. Now I want to have a look at this fourth wave on the five minute chart. I'm going to go and manage my analyses. I have the five minute chart from the last analysis and that's going to be wrong. Let's delete that. I'm going to create a new analysis from my hourly analysis. I'm going to call it five minute. Based on the hourly, yep, that's right. Let's close that. Here's my new analysis. Let's get rid of all these lines before we go down to the five minute time frame because otherwise they'll stuff up the scale and get really annoying. Okay, let's just drag this over to the right. I don't want that there yet. Now let's go down to five minute. Okay. Let's snap this to the end. Let's see if this could possibly be complete. I'm just going to really focus on this correction. I want to know if it could be over. Okay, well, it's probably most likely ABC. No, that C wave looks like a 3. I don't want to try and even see if that can be a 5. That doesn't fit. Oh, what I do think this might be, though, I think, looking at that, it's probably going to be a double. Label that WXY. Here's a trick, though. Let's just go back here. This is something I really don't like. Motive wave will let you do. If I label this ABC and I try and see the five wave subdivision within C, it's going to let me label it as a correction, and that is just wrong. No, we're not going to go there, and we're not doing that. Okay, C waves must subdivide as fives, that's pretty clear. Okay, let's bring that WXY back, because I think we have a double here. Okay, so we have a three-wave structure here, and we've got a new low below this point, so this movement here is over, it's not going to continue. And this is a three, it certainly looks like it. Okay, now the question is, is this going to subdivide as a three or a five? And I think to get the answer to that, we're going to have to go down to the one minute chart. Let's have a look at that wave W on the one minute chart. I'll do it on the same one. I'm not creating a new analysis for that because I've gotten rid of all those lines and text boxes. Oh wow, okay. This is going to be ambiguous possibly. Let's see. Let's count how many subdivisions in this one. One, two... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I don't want to count that, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, that's 5 and 
12 which subdivides to 4 so that could be extension so yeah that's got an impulsive wave count let's see how that might subdivide as an impulse does that fit and does it work oh uh, yeah well I'm gonna disagree with that huh. okay usually it's an extended third wave so let's see if that's the case here I'll put this right at the top how does that work Okay, possibly. And then the fifth wave here could be extended. Yeah, that could fit. Okay, it actually looks all right. I'm not going to worry about ratios down here on the one minute chart though, that's just getting a bit too much. Okay, what about this one? I think this is probably going to fit just fine as well as an impulse. I think I want to put this. Oh, no. I'm going to put this here. Okay. Mm. Let's decompose this third wave as well. Oh, no. No, no. Let's put that there. And put that there. Um, third wave here. Yeah, probably. That looks okay. Let's go back to the five minute. Okay, so it does subdivide actually pretty well as a 535. Five. Let's just go back to the one minute and see the overall look of it. Am I trying to see something that I want to see, or am I seeing what's there? No, that has a fairly alright look as a three-wave structure for that W. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so if that's a WXY, and we've got a new low below this point, probability that it's over is reasonably good. Okay, well, there's my hourly chart. Save that. Create a PNG. For what date is this? Oh, it's the 16th. Okay, so for the daily chart, the invalidation point is now going to be here. Then the third wave, we should not have any second wave correction that moves beyond the start of it. So that price point, 465.75. Just squish that up a little bit. Mm, well, if sec the second wave is over, it's a running flat, albeit the subdivisions all do fit, so particularly the B wave, if you want to see if you have a running flat, the key really is the B wave, it has to subdivide to a 3. If this was at all ambiguous, I wouldn't want to label it a running flat, but that's clearly a 3, so yeah, the subdivisions fit, so I'm happy that that's what's happened. It's unusual, but certainly possible. Particularly at the start of a third wave of a third wave at primary and intermediate degree. Okay. So what if the third wave is going to be 1.618 length of the first? Where would that take price to? One eight one. Don't think so. Okay, what about a quality? Hmm. Two eight nine seventy eight. 
Okay, well that fits with the target for the third wave at primary degree. And when we have more structure within intermediate wave 3, we can see if that target's going to be likely or recalculate it. That's a bit squished up. Can I just widen that a little bit? Yeah, I think that's looking a bit better. It's a little bit clearer. Let's pull this down a little bit. Snap this arrow on here. Bring these targets down. And that's the daily chart. I'm going to leave this acceleration channel here. I've drawn this from the start of 1 to the end of 2 with a copy on 1. If this is a third wave at intermediate degree, we should see that channel breached with some strong downwards movement. And now I want to have a look at the alternate to see if we can find a confidence point. Hmm, well, maybe we could say we could definitely have more confidence if we see a new low below this point, 385.10. Such a big movement. If this is a third wave at intermediate degree within a third wave at primary degree, then let's have a confidence point below which we can have more confidence in those targets because that's a pretty big call, that wave count. Okay, so that's how I use mode of wave, and that's how I try and figure out a wave count. And that's all for me today with your Apple analysis.